Well, TGIF to all of those Washington football fans out there. Welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be covering a lot of stuff, uh, starting off with the injury report for this Sunday's matchup against the Las Vegas Raiders, which is still weird to say Las Vegas Raiders, but um, I'm getting to it. Um, anyway, or I'm getting used to it, I should say. Let's hop into the injury report. Now, we did hear yesterday that Benjamin St. Juice um, is going to be on injured reserve, so he's pretty much going to be locked away for the rest of the season, saved for another time. I thought that he did okay this season. I mean, yeah, he got burnt a few times, but, you know, him being a rookie, learning the speed of the NFL – you kind of give him a pass on that. I thought he played pretty well. He, he he played hard. And I think that the only direction he's going to go is up. So I do have some high hopes for Benjamin St. Juice. I think I think we have a good one with him. Um, I can't wait to see how he plays in 2022. Um, but uh, not to worry. Right now we seem to have the hot hand with uh, Fuller and uh, – Oh, man, I get on camera and my mind goes blank. Girl Roberts. Uh, so I think uh, with those with those guys in there, we're, we're playing the hot hand. We're seeing how things go. And so far, things have been okay. Um, <laughs> you know, we still get burnt a lot of times with William Jackson. I think he's still learning whatever it is he needs to learn. Um, so all that being said, Benjamin St. Juice, going to save him for 2022. But getting along with it, we have uh, Landon Collins, who did not practice this week. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to play on Sunday or not. We, we do need him. I tell you what, Landon Collins, since he has agreed to move to more of a linebacker uh, position, he has played lights out. I mean, he is... He has played on a Pro Bowl level, and we all knew it. I mean, all of us fans were calling for him to be moved up, and it's worked. So, you know, sometimes us fans kind of know a little bit of what we're talking about, but, um, you know, we may not have him Sunday. That's going to be a big void that we're going to have to fill because uh, Landon Collins, uh, the position he's playing right now, has really helped us out a bit. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to have to kind of, you know, uh, take inventory of that, keep a close eye on Collins, see what happens. I don't expect him to play on Sunday. Uh, Taylor Larson um, turned the corner maybe with that knee injury. He didn't practice on Wednesday, but he did have some limited practice on Thursday, so maybe there's a little bit of hope there. Uh, J.D. McKissick uh, suffering from a concussion. He says he's fine, uh, but he's not practicing this week. Don't know if we're going to have him for Sunday. I would just assume we're probably not. We're probably going to see Smallwood in there along with, um, of course, Antonio Gibson and uh, Jarrett Patterson. I suspect we will see more Jarrett Patterson than anything else. Um, so that's probably going to be what we're going to wind up seeing on Sunday. Uh, Wes Schweitzer, thangle, ankle injury, did not practice this week. Um Gibson has had limited practice, as always. He'll be fine. Curtis Samuel, uh, limited practice. Uh, he's, going, he's going to play, obviously. Brandon Sheriff, uh, limited practice with the knee. Uh, Ricky Seals-Jones had limited practice this week. Would love to, to get Ricky Seals-Jones back to, to help Logan Thomas and to strengthen that tight end position. We could, we could certainly use both of those guys in there. And, of course, uh, Logan Thomas uh, continues to have limited practice as he is working himself back to 100% from that hamstring injury. Uh, Eric Flowers um, did not practice on Thursday. Uh, we really need Eric Flowers. Uh, I tell you what, I'm talking about a guy who has rejuvenated his his career, uh, everybody pretty much said he was, he was just – not good when he was with the Giants. Uh, comes over to Washington, plays great, leaves and goes to what Miami for a year. Comes back. I'm so glad we have Flowers back, man. Flowers has just been a godsend for us on that offensive line. So we really need him back there uh, and healthy. Now for the Las Vegas Raiders, um, Carl Nasib 
Um, he did not practice this week as knee injury. Um, <clears throat> Patrick Onsoir, um, hamstring injury, did not practice this week. Uh, Darren Waller, their star tight end, has not practiced this week. He's suffering from a back and knee injury. Uh, that could be a huge loss for the Raiders if he does not play on Sunday. And as well, Deshaun Jackson. Um, Deshaun Jackson did not practice this week. He is suffering from – well, actually, I'm sorry. He did have limited practice on Wednesday, did not practice on Thursday. So, not sure about Deshaun Jackson, if he's going to play. We all know that Jackson has – he has an injury history. He he never plays all 16 games for anybody. So when he's in there, when he's in there, he he is just electrifying. I mean, he will score a touchdown on you in a zip. But you know, you, he's not dependable as far as being healthy. And who knows? He may not even see action on Sunday. Would be better for us certainly if he doesn't, because you know our secondary. Seems to get burnt at least once or twice every game, and I would fully expect Deshaun Jackson to burn us at least once. So not having him would be a, an uptick for us. Uh, the rest of their guys um, pretty much had full practice, um, except for uh, Josh Jacobs, uh, Nick Kowalk. I can't even pronounce his last name. Um and Nixon, Keyshawn Nixon. So um, those guys limited rest on our full practice. Uh, so, you know, both of us are, are certainly dealing with some injuries, and we will continue to see how that develops. Um, my hope is, is that um, we will have our guys healthy, of course, um, as healthy as we possibly can on that offensive line. Um, our, our offensive uh, offensive line coach has done an excellent job. I mean, he's worked with guys who are like, you know, basically third stringers, and these guys have performed absolutely, I mean, just above and beyond. And, I mean, how – there's nothing more else to say on that. I mean, I, honestly, I have not seen such – a great job at the offensive line in a while. I know that, you know, we, we spoke highly of Bill Callahan when he was here and the wonders that he did with our offensive line. I thought he had a little bit more talent um, at the offensive line than uh, what we, you know, probably have now. And honestly, this guy, um, I know this is going to sound a little sacred, <laughs> but, um, I mean, he is working wonders like our, our beloved Bugs did uh, Bugs, not Bugs, Bugs. <laughs> Golly, I am messing this video up today. Um, our Joe Bugle, how he just took a bunch of no-names and turned them into the Hogs back in the 80s. I mean, right now, our offensive line, it's like we have nothing to worry about, it seems like. Knock on wood. It's been next man up mentality, and they all have performed well. Uh, Ismail will probably wind up being our center for the rest of the season, possibly. So, um, you know, right now, if it's working, let's just keep going at it. If someone gets hurt, next man up, right? Um, finally, the stuff about Robert Griffin III, and I want to circle back on that. Uh, Robert, of course, as I said in the last video, he's coming out with a book. Uh, it's coming out in August. It's going to be like a tell-all book about all of the stuff that he survived in Washington. And, you know, certainly at first glance, all of us fans are like, okay, this is nothing more than just Robert having saltiness about him and wanting to rain on Washington's parade right now that they're kind of riding a high and, you know, they're going through all these changes and trying their best to, to shed – um, the reputation that this franchise has gotten in the last few years, thanks to Bruce Allen and Dan Snyder. And suddenly Robert Griffin III comes out with his book, and then we're all like, oh, great, you know, Mr. Salty coming back. But now, of course, you know, as we uh, learn a little bit more into it, you know, he's talking about sexual harassment. He's talking about sexual harassment uh, directed toward himself. And now it's going to make you think. 
Okay. This is a little bit different now, uh, and I don't treat sexual harassment lightly, you know, whether if it's a, a woman or a man. Um, either way, nobody should be sexually harassed. Um, and I know that I kind of probably had some sharply, uh, sharply edged words uh, to Griffin in my last video, but I will say uh, I, I definitely support him if he wants to come out and speak out on any sexual harassment that he has received in Washington, you know, whatever you think about Robert Griffin III, no, I do like the guy. I do. I, I, you know, I think there, there's some definitely there's there's some skeletons in his closet that he has to deal with. Obviously, um, you know, his uh, his personal life with his ex-wife and current wife and all that stuff. So, you know, none of that's necessarily our business, but. You know, when it comes to sexual harassment, that is an issue. And so, you know, certainly that is something that uh, if he wants to tell a story on that, he should tell his story. Now, I think also I wish that he would have came forward a lot earlier. Maybe it would have helped uh, some of those other ladies uh, who have not been able to tell their story. Um, so, and I, I'm still confused as to why this is not coming out till August. Maybe as things progress, as time goes on, we will start to see why it's being delayed, you know, for so long. But you know, maybe there's a maybe there's a gag order or something that is lifted uh, before that point, and so he's going to release the book right after the gag order. I don't know, um, but all I know is, you know, being selfishly. Um, as a fan who would love to see change in ownership, um, if it's the silver bullet that happened to, you know, kick Daniel Snyder to the, the curb, force him to sell the team, hey, I, I'm for it. Um, but, and, and I would probably appreciate uh, Robert Griffin III for, you know, coming forth and bringing that, that to us. Um, but... You know, at, at the same time, it does seem kind of salty. Um, but I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. I probably still won't buy the book. Um, I just, you know, at some point, you have to move on from the negativity. And, you know, if this is going to be a team that is your favorite team, my favorite team, and we're going to support them, at some point, you just have to say, you know, whatever happened in the past, Let's put it in the past. Let's focus on the future. There's new people here now. There's new players. There's new coaches. Um, there's new people in the front office. I think uh, Jason Wright is doing a, a, a great job as president. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's a bunch of new stuff in Washington. And at some point we have to focus on realizing, okay, let's, let's see what we have now. You know, what we had in the past was toxic. Hopefully we've gotten rid of all of that toxicity. Now it's time for us to focus on what's going to what's going to happen in the future, and hopefully what's going to happen in the future is more winning on the field. So hopefully we will see that this Sunday against the Raiders. The Raiders defense is they're ranked what la dead last in several categories. So this is a chance for Washington. To continue on, if I would say, you know, key points to the game, I would definitely say key points to the game, keep doing what you're doing. Keep establishing that run early. Pound them with the running game. You know, pound them with uh, Antonio Gibson. Um, if we're not going to have J.D. McKissick, then, you know, pound them with Jarrett Patterson. Um, you know, pound them with uh, Smallwood if he comes in. Just make sure that... Nobody fumbles the football. That's the biggest thing. We got to keep um, better control of the ball. We got to make sure that we don't do any fumbles, interceptions, anything like that. Um, for Taylor Heineke, again, it, it's kind of a continuation. You know, he's playing smart football. Take what they give you. You know, take your shots when when it's appropriate. Don't force it. Um, take off. You know, running when you need to. He's doing all of that stuff. He's playing smart football. Um, as you can see, he is not a quarterback that has a big arm. So, 
you know, because of that, um, you're not going to see him going downfield a lot. But he's a perfect quarterback for a methodical offense that's going to work its way downfield and wear you down as a defense. And so he's perfectly fine there. Um, so right now, for Taylor Heineke, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, offensive line, keep protecting. You know, you're doing a great job. I mean, they are working together. Uh, again, my hat's off to the offensive line coach. I, mean, I, I wish I could remember his name right now, but um, he's doing a fabulous job. He really is. All right, this video is getting way too long. Um, I'm going to leave this to you by saying that I think if Washington can beat Las Vegas, they're 6-6. Six and six. Uh, Dallas did win last night, but... This is shaping up to be a huge game against the Cowboys. Uh, Washington is going to look at these NFC East games as a new season or a mini playoff, if you will. And I think by looking at that, they're going to look at this as all of all of these teams are zero and zero. So um, you get past Las Vegas, and now you're ready for basically your pre playoff run is is what I'm calling this. So um, Washington is peaking at the right time. This is great. They're in the playoffs right now. They just need to keep winning. Um, you know, as for everything else, as for the name change, let's worry about that when it gets here. I still think it's going to be commanders at this point. Um, Robert Griffin III, uh, we'll put him on the shelf until time for his book to come out, and then I'm sure we'll find out more about what's going on. It may be a bunch of nothing. It may be, you know, some some hot news, whatever. At this point, if you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. Um, I've got a lot of other videos. Videos are usually a little bit more exciting than this. <laughs> it's because I haven't had all of my coffee yet, and it's about time for me to head on to work. So, guys, you'll get this video later on today. Hope you enjoy yourself. Uh, my kitty cat Snickers or Coco is trying to get over here. Anyway, take care.